Toza Construction Collapses. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because sadly the construction apocalypse continues with another builder collapsing. This time, Toza Construction Group in Wagga Wagga, Wagga Wagga, Wagga Wagga, in New South Wales has gone into court-ordered liquidation. And before we go through this article, let's jump over and, well, have a look at some Google reviews because they're shining a light on what's happening here, guys. Here we go. From Hannah Ocean, six months ago, her one review she's done. So, must read. This company is no longer paying their bills and may be insolvent. We have undertaken professional services for this company over the past last 18 months, and they have not made any payments despite us chasing them multiple times. Oh, no. They do not return phone calls. We have ceased working for them and are commencing legal, legal proceedings. So, is this maybe that she's the company that forced this court order? We caution anyone looking at this group to stop providing work for them without upfront payment. We understand other professionals are now commencing legal proceedings as well. Four months ago, from Jack, the company is likely trading insolvent. As trading insolvent is unlawful, well, it wasn't for a period during COVID. Remember remember when they changed all the rules? Just remember that, okay? Just remember that. They may change the rules in the future. As trading and solvent is... See, the civil servants change the rules. The civil servants who will never have to experience anything like this, who have probably never run a business, who have never had to wait on invoices coming in, who've got all their bills they need to pay beforehand, who've never experienced running a small business. Anyway. Um, affected parties can lodge reports to ASIC, yes. Here we go. Another one from six months from Stephen. We added a photo. Is that for this? Okay. Nope. Not them. Hang on. 2.3 stars. That's not pretty good. No, not, that's pretty bad. Very poor service. I had appointments for 13th of the 4th, 22, and they just didn't show. Spoke to the receptionist, and she said, we have no bookings for the appointment, even though I booked two months ago. Okay. So this is a client. So we've got subbies here that are obviously getting screwed over. And here's a client that's not six months ago that was complaining. One year ago, I'm very disappointed. We found them very unresponsive and they're not get, get back to you when they say they will. We made the mistake of spending 25000 on roof repairs with them only to require additional work. The roof was installed, still seems to leak. I've tried to discuss the job further with senior management, but they don't return calls. Warren was going to call me back in January, but I'm still waiting for him, so... There you go. I've been waiting since the 26th of Feb for a second quote and have requested to complete the remainder of the repairs that have previously missed. Wouldn't use them again. Wow, so many negative here. Office email, one review nine months ago. Subcontractors beware. These guys do not pay their invoices. There seems to be a trend here. How long have these guys been in trouble? So, I mean, we're talking a year ago here. Do you think they may have been one of the lot that was uh, taking advantage of the trading while insolvent changes. This is the, the problem of running a small business. You're always susceptible to fall, you know this happening to you, someone just not paying their bills. I have sent so many reminders, called and left messages for no response, very poor form, no way to conduct a business. And that, that really sucks when you're, uh, you're doing that. I mean, I'm in a position now where I'm much more picky with who I have to work for. And that's part of the part of the reason why we scaled down our business. When I had a whole bunch of people working for us, I needed to just keep work coming in, particularly when one sector was getting a bit quiet, when another one hadn't picked up. And then you got to work for people who might string you along a bit. Dusko heard from numerous contractors that do not, Toes did not pay invoices. For this reason alone, I believe that no one should use them. As the builder, a bunch of tosses, yeah. Ray Forrest, two years ago, two years ago. Uh, oh, and then they've got a response. Let, let's have a look here. Let's see what they're saying. Um, well, it's 32000 to renovate a small bathroom, 46000 to renovate kitchen, 12000 for flooring in a tiny three-bedroom home. 
paid 150 for some to come some to come to quote after three weeks I got it renovated I've already demonstrated the uh, what the house bare moving non fixtures 112,000 nothing deleted in quote okay so that doesn't make any sense it looks like well maybe they're expensive but uh, house renovations cost a lot more than people realize Thank you for the feedback. We'd love to speak with you directly. But our calls, voicemails, and emails have gone unanswered. Perhaps you've chased your, changed your phone number. The prices you've stated are not the prices we quoted. They're all excessive figures to the amounts that were quoted. So we're not quite sure. So that could be a bit confusing. Uh, here we go. Another negative. Two years, another negative. A few good ones here five years ago. So what happened? Let's uh, have a look at this article, guys. So... Yet another family has fallen victim to Australia's building crisis after their construction firm ghosted them for over a year and then collapsed, leaving them thousands of dollars out of pocket. Stephen Handy of Worrells was appointed as liquidator, but he told news.com.au he does not know how much the company owes or how many homeowners have been left in the lurch. However, a look at the firm's credit history reveals a trail of disgruntled contractors and homeowners. One of those is 44 years old, Anita Kemp, a mother of three who paid $14,000 deposit to add an extra bedroom to her house only for work to, walk, walk, work to stall for a year and a half. Oh, well, bugger. She sent multiple legal letters to Toza Construction Group asking for her money back after nothing was done for over a year but never received a response. Ms. Kemp has since learned she's not protected by the Home Builders Compensation Fund as the builder didn't register her build, meaning she can't get back any money through insurance. It's unraveled to be a nightmare. The mum told news.com.au the deposit was uh, $13,200, which may not sound like a lot, but it's a lot for our family. They've taken my money and run. So it seems like they were, they were doing a... Maybe they're just badly run. Maybe they were just badly run. The, the, tr- the old trick of the, you know, the Ponzi scheme of construction where the next job is paying for the previous job. You just keep, keep them coming in to keep the jobs going. Trading while insolvent. We were totally ghosted. They'd taken the money and didn't want to have anything to do with us since. Miss Kemp and her husband have three kids, two of whom share a room. And they wanted an extra bedroom in time for their eldest daughter's final year of school. Yeah, that I've got four kids in a room right now and... We've got one that's just about, you know, hopefully by the time they're teenagers, we'll have more rooms for them. And you want that for grade 12. She's in a little sardine box. She's in a little sardine box in a little room. Her family has grown, but our house hasn't grown with us. The plan was for their daughter to move into the new room where she could fit a desk while their two sons would inhabit the two pre-existing rooms. Unfortunately, Miss Kemp's daughter will have her exams last Friday the same day Toza went into liquidation, yeah, the bedroom hasn't even begun. In May last year, the family approached Toza Construction Group to complete the renovation and paid the deposit the following month for their 60000 build. They said the firm appeared legitimate, as it had its own shop front and receptionist. But during the second wave of COVID-19, the shop shut down and it was never reinstated. It reached October 21 and no work had been undertaken when Miss Kemp started chasing up what happened to her build. She was alarmed to discover several staff had quit and that communication was minimal, having to repeatedly call to get any kind of answer. Yeah, they were they they were gone. They were gone at this point. They were probably even gone when they when they took the money, they were probably in trouble. So I bet you the lockdowns destroyed this business. And they probably were looks like they were running insolvent for some time. By January this year, she issued letters of demand and even employed lawyers to do the same saying she no longer wanted to continue with her renovation and wanted her money to be paid back, but the company's director never responded. Miss Kemp said she searched up the director's address on ASIC and personally served him one of her letters, although she never received a refund. She even took the case to court and a default judgment was issued, but she still didn't make the company return her money. Yeah, I, <laughs> I've been in that situation. I've won a default judgment. I mean, let's... This guy responded. Uh, he didn't respond with his account. Sometimes you can 
Remember, we had a lot, another builder we looked at that responded, and we could see they were leaving all these comments because they they had gone overseas on holiday. I shouldn't have to pay someone to get my own bloody money back. I haven't done anything wrong. She lamented, oh, yeah, I know. That's business. That's the business. It's business. You have to pay sometimes. You're entering into a business relationship here. If they do the dodgy, you need to pay a lawyer to sue. That's how it is. She doesn't expect to receive much, if anything, back through the liquidation either. Yeah, that, that money's probably all gone. You're not, you're not going to see any of that, I'm afraid. A report from Private Cre- Credit Reporting Bureau Credit Watch shows Toza Construction Group had a number of trades who owed money. The company was forced into liquidation after a joinery business called Ronbo Contracting started winding up proceedings over an unpaid debt. American Express is owed a hundred grand. Oh, shit! So they're using the credit card to keep the business going. Cash advances. Ah, oh, yeah. This is a builder that should have probably shut down earlier. Maybe they were just living off hopium, hoping, hoping, hoping to it'll all sort itself out. It's, it's not, not a happy thing for them either, guys. According to a default judgment order in September, while Timber Company, Dalzend Building Centers is owed 20 grand. Then the steel suppliers owed 9,200 and Building Supply Co., who took the company to court over a 27,000 debt. Baymont Concreting took them to court in May for 21,000 of labor costs. That went unpaid. Big front roofing is also it's also owed the same amount. Yeah, so yeah, they they ran out of money. What did they do? What did they do? Did COVID, did lockdowns destroy him? The liquidator, Mister Hundy, has employed employed creditors to contact his office so they can lodge a pool of of debt claim. News.com has attempted to contact the company's director. A spate of construction companies have collapsed. Yep, and here we're looking at the standard list now of builders going under in the construction apocalypse, which we have followed many times on this channel. So, I mean, let's... Let's... Uh, I think we'll jump and have a look. Can we find... Do they have a website? Where's their website? They've got a profile on here, on Facebook. Is this it? Corey Toza Constructions? Yeah, everything's down. Yeah, LinkedIn. They have a LinkedIn? No. Okay, they've obviously shut down. Well, let's, uh, let's have a bit of a talk about this. This is the harsh reality of uh, business sometimes. What can you do if you're in this situation? Maybe check Creditor Watch for your builder. Get a report done. Search for the name. Do look at the look at the Google Google search. Go to the Google search. If there's if you're gonna see if you see subbies bitching, that's something to worry about. That would probably be one of the first things I'd look at. Try and find some Facebook groups about subbies. I think there's subbies united. Maybe just ask. Ask on there. You know, have you anyone worked with these builders? Do they pay their subbies on time? That's what you want to check. If they pay their subbies on time, which, you know, that's a good sign. If subbies are bitching or refusing to work for them, that's a warning sign right there. That's a red flag. Now it may not. It may just mean it could have been a tough time. The business is pushing through. But I mean, here's the thing: if if you're going through a tough time or you've got money that hasn't been paid in, you get on the phone, you talk to your subbies or your business contacts, and you say, "Can I have another month to pay you that that fifty grand? I've got this invoice that hasn't come in yet." You know, and there should be enough of a respectful relationship there to say, "Yep, no problem." We'll work with you. Not angry comments on Google. So when it gets to that point, when someone's going on Google leaving angry comments, 
of not getting paid, that's something to just you know check on. Because it could just be an angry subby. I remember I worked for an architect firm and there was one artist that, this is back before we had all this social media stuff, he printed out these, these stickers attacking the firm and putting them all up around the city and they were trying to find out who it was, what was going on. Oh, boy. Anyway, guys, I feel sorry for this family, but they're probably not going to get anything back. It looks like this place has been in trouble for a while. And I feel sorry for the owners too of the building company. You don't want to be in this situation. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Check out my other channels, Heiser Bim and Heiser Says International for other topics I discuss. If you're a fan and want to support the channel, you can financially via YouTube or Patreon, using our referral links, buying our pocket squares or calling us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.